Justin Noah, Rockstar College Physics. We're going to be looking at a nice little problem here involving some instantaneous and average values. Well, really average values and approaching an instantaneous value regarding a velocity and acceleration for that matter. So let us just start with the first problem. All right, here it is. All right, so we've got ourselves a function that's describing an object's position with respect to time in the x direction. So we've got our function x of t, x as a function of time, is equal to 3t squared plus 7t. We're going to assume proper SI units. And yeah, there's an i hat in here because this is in the x direction, but I'm going to drop that because it gets a little um, over messy, in my opinion, for one dimensional motion. We know that we're talking about x, so this is in the x direction. Proper SI units, so these constants have some units. We'll get to that a little bit later. Let's just take a look at this. So the first question is, what is the object's displacement over the first five seconds? So A, we want delta x. Delta x between initial is equal to zero and t final is equal to five seconds. So what do we do? Right. This is the function that describes the position. We want the displacement. We just need the change in position. So we've got ourselves. Again, the delta x is going to be x final minus x initial, dropping the explicit vector signs once again. And what do we get? Well, we've got ourselves that x final is going to be x of t equals 5 seconds. x of t evaluated at t equals 5 seconds, which is going to be 3 times 5 seconds quantity squared plus 7 times 5 seconds. So what do we got there? 75 plus 35, ourselves 110. 110. So x final is equal to 110 meters. So that's our final x position. What's our initial x position? x initial <coughs> is equal to x of t is equal to 0, which is going to be equal to 3 times 0 plus 7 times 0. We stick in t equals 0 there, and we've got ourselves 0. So initially we're at the 0 meter mark, which is convenient, and 5 seconds later we're at the 110 meter mark. Thus, we've got ourselves that delta x is going to be equal to 110 meters. Want to throw in an i hat there? That's fine. Again, I'm just dropping it for now because we know that we're working in one dimension. All right, so there we go, part A. Part B asks another question. What is the object's average velocity over the first five seconds? So now we want B. We want ourselves V, so the average between t is equal to t initial is equal to zero and t final is equal to five seconds. So what do we have? Well, we've got the v average is going to be equal to the displacement in the x direction that occurs over that time interval. And what do we have? Well, we already know what the displacement is. It's this right there. Delta x is going to be equal to 110 meters. That's the displacement that occurs between t equals zero and t equals five seconds. And the time interval is of five seconds. Hmm. Go figure that. So what do we get out of that? 22, 22 meters per second. So let's, let's consider this for a second. If I move at a constant rate, 22 meters per second for five seconds, how far do I move? So I'm cruising down the freeway, 22 meters per second, five seconds goes by, I move a distance of 22 meters per second times 5 seconds, which is 110 meters. So that's the correlation there with average values, equivalent to the constant rate that you would have to be traveling at to produce the same displacement in that time interval. Not to say that I move it in a constant rate. We'll investigate that here in a little bit. So there we go. Let's change it now. Let's go ahead and say, what's the average velocity between t equals 3 and t equals 5. The average between t equals t initial is equal to 3 seconds 
and t final is equal to five seconds. So we're just taking a different time interval. Starting at three seconds and then at five seconds. So now we've got this. V average, again, is our delta x divided by delta t, which is going to be our x final minus x initial divided by t final minus t initial. X final is our final x position. So that is going to be x of t is equal to five seconds. The later moment in time is the final position. Minus x of t is equal to three seconds divided by, well, five seconds minus three seconds. So what do we need? We need x of t equals five and x of t equals three. We've already got x of t equals five. It's right here, 110 meters. So x of t is equal to five seconds was equal to 110 meters. So all that we really need left is x of t equals three. X of t is equal to three seconds is equal to three times three seconds quantity squared plus seven times three seconds. So what do you got there? We got ourselves there, 27 plus 20. 48. So it's 48 meters. There's how far we moved in that two second time interval. So now we've got this. The average is going to be equal to 110 meters final minus 48 meters initial divided by the time interval of two seconds. So what do we got there? 62 divided by two. 62 meters divided by two seconds is equal to 31 meters per second. And I should box this one too. So over that two second time interval, we're moving at a much faster rate on average, on average. If we were moving at a constant rate the whole time over that whole five seconds, it wouldn't matter what time intervals we utilize to calculate the average, we'd always get the same because it's a constant value. The fact that we're getting different average values depending on which time interval we're calculating the average value over tells us that, hey, your velocity is not really constant. Your velocity is changing with respect to time, which means that there's some sort of acceleration going on. We'll still focus here on velocity. All right, moving on. Hey, let's do a part D. Part D says, hey, compute it again. It's the average velocity, but now between 4.5 seconds and 5 seconds. So the average between t initial is equal to 4.5 seconds and t final is equal to 5 seconds. So just do it again. The average is delta x over delta t, which is going to be x of t equals 5 seconds minus x of t is equal to 4.5 seconds divided by the time difference, which is 0 0.5 seconds. So what do we need? We've got this, that we just got. So we need x of t equals 4.5 seconds. So x of t is equal to 4.5 seconds is equal to, we'll put evaluate the x of t at t equals 4.5 seconds. And we've got three multiplied by the quantity of 4.5 seconds squared plus seven times 4.5 seconds. This form requires me a little calculator here. And we've got three times 4.5 squared plus seven times 92.25, 92.25 meters. That's the position that we're at at t equals 4.5 seconds. We move from that position to the 110 meter mark over that 0.5 second time interval. So what does that mean? Do it over here. We've got ourselves then that v average is going to be equal to 110 meters minus 92.25 meters divided by 0 0.5 seconds. Again, working in that I hat direction, assuming here. So we've got 110 minus that divided by that. 
35.5 meters per second is our average velocity over that 0.5 second time interval. Let's do it one more time. One more time. Or part E here. And that is going to be, hey, let's shrink down the time interval to be really small, like 1 one hundredth of a second. What is the average velocity between T initial is equal to 4.99 seconds and T final is equal to 5 seconds? So if we at this point, hey, we know the time interval 0 0.1, excuse me, 0 0.01 seconds, we just need to know what is X initial. So we've got X initial is equal to X of T is equal to. 4.99 seconds, which is equal to 3 times 4.99 squared plus 7 times 4.99. So this gives us our initial position. And 3 times 4.99 squared plus 7 times 99. 109.630. 109.6303 meters. So that is the position that we're at at 4.99 seconds, and we already know x final is equal to 110 meters. That's it, t equals 5 seconds. So what do we need to do? Take the difference between those, divide it by the time interval. So we've got v average. It's going to be equal to 110 meters minus 109. 0.6303 meters divided by 0 0.01 seconds. And I'll just stick that in here really quick. I get 36.97. 36.97 meters per second. I'll leave those significant figures just for now. That we could round that up to 37, but let's see. That's it. What is the trend here as we get closer and closer to the time of exactly five seconds? Went from zero to five, gave us 22 meters per second. Three to five, gave us 31 meters per second. 4.5 to five, gives 35.5 meters per second. And 4.99 to five, gives 36.97 meters per second. We keep going with this. What happens if we went from T is equal to 4.99999? 999 to 5 seconds. Well, we shrink the time interval down to what? Like a millionth of a second. Give or take. And what's going to happen? We're going to get really, really close to the instantaneous value. And that's pretty much that. Those of you that know a little calculus, we can do this. V instantaneous to the time derivative of 3t squared plus 7t, which would be equal to 6t plus 7. 6t plus 7. So there would be the function that describes the velocity with respect to time. We could evaluate this. V evaluated at t is equal to 5 seconds would be equal to 6 times 5 seconds plus 7 is 37 meters per second. The true instantaneous velocity of this object at t equals 5 seconds is 37 meters per second. Average value between 4.99 and 5 seconds is 36.97. Pretty close to that, right? So as we shrink down the time interval, we approach the instantaneous value. Again, if you're not worried about calculus, don't worry about this. Um, it's not a calculus-based course. Otherwise, hey, this is important stuff. All right, so that was one problem. Let's do this again for another portion of this, really, and that's looking at the average acceleration. So here's the problem. All right, so we are going to take the same object 
whose position as a function of time is modeled as this, and now we're told specifically that its velocity as a function of time is 6t plus 7. We got proper SI units. And again, we're working in the x dimension. So we are told now that v of t is equal to 6t plus 7. So we're asked, hey, what's the <clears throat> what's the average acceleration between t equals 0 and t equals 5 seconds? t equals 0 and t equals 5 seconds. So what do we need? Well, again, dropping the vector signs because it's just one dimensional. We've got the average acceleration is the change in velocity over the time interval, which gives us a v final minus a v initial divided by a t final minus t initial. So we need the final and initial values here. So we've got the v final is going to be equal to v of t is equal to 5 seconds, which is going to be 6 times well, t equals 5 plus 7, which we've already determined to be 37 meters per second. And we've got that V initial is going to be equal to V of T is equal to zero seconds, which is going to be six times zero plus seven, which is equal to, oh, seven meters per second. So for this particular object, at T equals zero, when we're starting time, the object's already moving. It's moving at seven meters per second. Five seconds later, it's moving at 37 meters per second. So that's saying specifically this object's increasing its speed with respect to time. And that's some things that we want to be able to focus our attention on. All right, so what can we do with this? Well, we just do it. We've got ourselves that A average is going to be equal to 37 meters per second minus 7 meters per second divided by 5 seconds. Well, that's going to be 30 divided by 5, which is going to be equal to 6 meters per second squared. There is our average acceleration. To go from 7 meters per second to 37 meters per second over a 5 second time interval, if we increase our velocity by 6 meters per second every second that goes by, That'll do it. After one second that goes by, we'd have 13. Two seconds go by, 18. Three seconds go by, 24. Am I messing this up? 13, 6, 19, sorry. 19, then 25, then 31, then 37. 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. This is from there to there. So there's the characterization of our average acceleration. <clears throat> If we do it for another time interval, let's say between t equals zero and t, excuse me, t equals three and t equals five. T equals three seconds and t is equal to five seconds. That's final, that's initial. Well, what can we do with this? Again, we've got ourselves that the average velocity is going to be equal to V of t is equal to 5 seconds minus V of t is equal to 3 seconds divided by, well, it's going to be a 2 second time interval in this case. So we've got ourselves, this is 37, we need V of t equals 3 seconds. V of t is equal to 3 seconds is equal to 6 times 3 seconds plus 7. What's that? 18 plus 7, 25. 25 meters per second, oops, sorry, right in the wrong spot, 25 meters per second. So the average acceleration is going to be 37 meters per second minus 25 meters per second divided by 2 seconds. Well, 37 minus 25, that's 12. 12 divided by 2, that's 6. 6 meters per second squared. We got the same value. Hmm. Does that mean that uh, acceleration is constant? Possibly. Possibly. Could be a coincidence, but it is possible. So what we could look at is 
the actual function that's describing the velocity with respect to time. We've got this, right? We've got time goes on, one, two, three, four, five. Here's time here. Look at velocity. Velocity here. And what do we have? Initially, we start at seven meters per second. So we can put like seven here, seven, and then what are we doing? We're adding six onto that, right? After one second, add six. After two seconds, add 12. So after one second, we've got 13. And then after two seconds, we're adding another six onto it, 19. And then 25. And then 37. 37, 25, 19, 13. Seven, and this is all meters per second. Well, one, two, three, four, five in the seconds there. Initially, we are right here at zero. T equals zero, seven meters per second. T equals one second. T equals two seconds. T equals three seconds. T equals four seconds. One, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. I'm missing one, right? Seven, fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> skipping, I'm skipping. We got a thirty-one, and then a thirty-seven. Ooh. So that, and then that. You notice anything about all those points there? They line up in a nice straight line, right? So we can connect them all. Nice straight line. And say that curve there describes, I'm gonna make this right a little bit. This curve here describes the variance of the object's velocity with respect to time. That straight line right there. If we look at the average value between any two points on this line, we're always gonna get the same because there's only one slope for this line. No matter what point you're picking, because it's a straight line. So the slope is going to be delta V over delta T and it's constant. Thus, A equals six meters per second squared at all time, at all times. That's it. So ultimately, this is a linear function here. The velocity is changing linearly. The velocity changes linearly. That means a linear increase or decrease in the object's velocity. And thus, we've got ourselves a constant acceleration. All right, so there's a nice little problem. We'll do lots more. Right. Good times. <laughs>